Hi there and welcome, Nick Watson here. And today tackling the issue of what to do when you feel weird things in meditation. And this is the video that I wish that I had had 15 years ago when I began doing a meditation practice because I was experiencing weird things and I was really too shy or too scared to ask a teacher. And to be honest, at that time, even if they had explained to me what was happening, I don't think I would have got it. So after 15 years of studying yoga, tantra, and also energy work, I'm starting to understand what was really going on. So I wanted to give you a little bit of insight into things that might be happening in your meditation practice that you don't understand. You're maybe a little worried about them, a little scared, and I just want to share what's happening and give you some solutions to them. Now, I want to say that, as I mentioned before, my own practice was with Ishta Yoga. Ishta is an acronym for Integrated Science of Hatha, Tantra and Ayurveda. So my own meditation practice was tantric based and that is a little bit different than a mindfulness based meditation practice. Mindfulness meditation practice, you're just really becoming a witness. It's more of like a Buddhist lineage where you're becoming a witness of your breath, you're witnessing sensation in the body, you're noticing. It's more noticing based, a little bit more passive. Whereas in the Ishta meditation or the yogic meditations, the practice is around bringing the energy in from the five senses, from outside world, and then directing it through the chakra system or through the central line that we have in the energetic body called Sushumna Nadi. And it's a connection back to your core, to your electromagnetic system, and it's, it's a kind of pulling inward. So that said, when I began my meditation practice, I'd be sitting and we would sit for about 20 minutes in silence and things would happen in my body that didn't necessarily feel comfortable and I did feel a little bit scared at the time. So the first thing was when my body would start swaying a little side to side, almost like I was a pendulum. So I'd be in meditation and I'd kind of be unconscious of this happening and then all of a sudden go, oh my goodness, and try to come back to center. Sometimes it would be back and forward and sometimes I'd be round and round in circles. In any case, it happens and I want to explain a little bit about why it's happening and how you can come back if you don't like that feeling, how you can pull it back in. So when we bring, if you imagine your body is an electromagnetic being, you have energy coming into the body, that's what animates you, you're not a corpse, and that energy is distributed out. And the way that the energy is distributed out, just like you have light switches all around your house, there are various switch points in the body that help to distribute the energy out. This energy in yoga, we call it prana. In science, we call it electromagnetic force. The switch points in yoga are called chakras. And in a scientific, it would be plexus, nerve plexus, places where the nerves are especially dense. And the chakras are subtle body systems, energy systems, we can't see them or feel them or touch them, but it's an energetic loop that helps to spin the energy out to fingers and toes and eyes and feet. Because these, almost like a dynamo system, needs to, to work, what we have to have is to the side is a pulley system that helps to spin like a car wheel, helps to spin the energy out into all parts of the body. Now, once you have this up and down, up and down happening and the energy is being distributed, it also creates a, like a tornado, right? When a tornado is around, there's a central line of energy that's down in the center that is connected from the top to the bottom, but doesn't touch the sides. 
Now this we would call shashum nanadi. It would be like your direct connection to your source, if you want to call it source or whatever you like to call it. When we are in the swaying place, what's happening? It's like the car has lost the central line on the road and it's swerving one way and then it's trying to correct itself and swerving the other and so on. And so these two lines that go down alongside Shashumna are called Idam Pingala. And what's happening is the energy is going to one and then switching and it's trying to find its calibration. Now, a little bit of this is fine, right? We all do a little movement when we meditate, but sometimes it becomes too erratic and it can feel just really destabilizing. So what we're trying to do is imagine pulling the energy into the central channel rather than letting the car swing and veer from side to side. And I'm going to show you a technique that you can use if this is something that's been happening in your meditation practice. This mudra, ahankara mudra, the first finger and the thumb touching together, and then the other three fingers splayed out, just placing this right at the center of the chest with the other three fingers gently over the heart will actually help to pull the energy away from the swing and into a more aligned, right? We, we use the word aligned. What we're talking about is an alignment with this energetic core, Shishumna Nadi, or your source line. So that is my tip if you are what I would call a swinger. The second thing that might happen is that you have feelings of nausea or feelings of vertigo, like swelling and kind of feeling. And again, this is where the energy is not moving up and down the Shishumna Nadi, or you could imagine like the closest thing we have in the physical body would be the cerebral spinal fluid in the spinal column. It's getting stuck around this center. So we have this kind of almost like a, an, a churning. It's not able to lift up. If this is your experience, then what I recommend is that you actually just gently open your eyes and cast the gaze down. That way the energy is lifted up a little and you don't, you have a more, um, a more solid connection with the, the space that you're in. So just having the eyes open but cast down, letting that energy come up and down nicely. And also the other thing that helps with that is just a gentle compression of the abdomen back. So you're pulling the energy from the abdomen slightly back and then it's going to come up to the head just because your eyes are open. So that's the second thing that can feel a little bit weird in meditation. Now the third thing that can happen that feels again a little bit strange is the feeling of dying and this is something that I think not so many people talk about in their meditation but it happened to me for a while that I was really scared I was going to die in meditation and to some extent it's kind of truthful because the same experience that we have when we meditate is is close to death and we it should be close to death we're in fact killing off part of our ego and becoming a little bit more truthful about who we are. But let me talk you through the process and why the ego or the mind might be a little bit freaked out when you go into meditation. There are certain physiological things that happen when you die. You close your eyes, your sense of smell goes away, your sense of taste goes away, your hearing goes away, and your sense of yourself, right? your actual physical self, you draw inward and then poof, you are released from the body. In a meditation practice, we're actually wanting this to happen. It's called pratyahara. But because there's like some similarity, if you have an over anxious brain, which most of us do, then the brain could start sending off alarm bells about, oh my God, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. It's so tightly held the ego to the body that it, it feels very difficult to release. 
I'm going to say a couple of things that might help you here. The first is that it would be very auspicious, in fact, if you died during meditation. You would, as my teachers say, have the super highway without any pain, without any fear, and just move straight through. It has really not happened to many people. And I think this is like, if you've ever watched the documentary about Yogananda, like this was his greatest accomplishment, that he was able to go into what we call Samadhi and just transition out of the body. It's a very, very pleasant way to leave the body, but again, unlikely to actually happen. And if it did, you would really have won, you know, gold star for yogi. The second thing that I want to assure you about and tell your brain to, to realize is that what you're doing is what you do every night when you go to sleep. Your senses come inwards when you go to sleep. But we don't panic about dying when we go to sleep because we understand it's a place of rest. See if you can see your meditation just like you're going to sleep except for the fact that you're sitting up and the same feeling of rest and healing that happens when you're asleep is going to happen when you're meditating and even more because you are actually sitting up. So don't worry about dying. You are just experiencing a shift in your way of being. Okay, the last thing that might happen that you are sitting in meditation and all of a sudden you get a huge surge of heat or a huge surge of perhaps sometimes people talk about getting a surge of saliva or perhaps ringing in their ears or perhaps even that feeling of like a, a fire up through the center line of their body. This is when the energy is moving really quickly, right? And it's just like released all of a sudden and it can feel a little bit intense. Now, one of the ways to counterbalance this where the energy just releases too quickly and you have flashes of heat all of a sudden ringing in the ears, saliva happening is to do some asana, some yoga before you do a meditation so that the energy centers are open gradually. And when I teach, then I teach a specific, specific poses with specific intentionality before I go into meditation so that all the energy centers are open, this line of energy is open and we don't get this like floodgate that's happening. The second thing is doing neutralizing breathing technique before you do your meditation. I love Nadi Shodhana or alternate nostril breathing. And that will balance out the energy between the left side and the right side so that there's no floods of energy. So I hope this has been helpful. There may be other experiences out there that I have not heard of. So please get in touch and let me know. I'd love to research them and go into a little bit more depth. Um, I do teach about this in my course called Dinacharya and I'm gonna be teaching a live version of Dinacharya this fall, this September. So if you are interested, then I'll put the link into the notes below and feel free to go and check out. It's a six weeks course. And in it, I'll be looking at how to use daily habits, including the habit of meditation to really get yourself back being centered, to have great mental health, to really have touch points during the day so that you are conscious of your life and in a masterful way that is not just mastery in an ego way, but also working with the rhythms of nature. It's all coming from my training in Ayurveda and polarity work and just getting this more subtle energy and knowledge to work for you so that you can live your best life ever. So if you're interested, check it out. Let me know how you feel and if any of these techniques are helping you, I would love to hear more. Until then, signing off. Hari Om, Om Tat Sat.